So I wanted to walk you through um, how to pick the right um, Instant Pot for yourself. And so let's do that. Let's, let me move to this um, uh, presentation and we'll do it. Every single time something glitches, like we've tested everything five times and then something glitches like two minutes before the show. So we've got we've to get our acts together. So here's the thing. I, hear, I see this question on the Instant Pot forum all the time. Uh, you know, what pot should I be getting? There's so many of us, this is what I cook. And I don't know that it's helpful because we all try to help. And the, res the person who asked the question gets a list of responses like that. And they range everywhere from you need a slow cooker to, you know, get an eight quart and a six quart. And so the, the, the person who's posed the question is left with just like everybody's opinions. And what I thought I would do is try to break it down in a manner um, that actually uh, you could use some logic and say, all right, I'm just going to use a flow chart and I'm going to kind of figure out where I am. Alex, can you see? Are we doing okay with questions? Okay. All right. So here's the two dimensions that you need to evaluate your needs on, I would suggest. One of them is the size of the pot that you need. And the second one is the model that you need. Okay, so for the size, the easiest way to go about this is to tell me how many people you're cooking for. So some of us are cooking for one or two people, some of us are cooking for three or four, and then some of us are cooking for four people. Some of us like leftovers. Uh, we in my family have a lot of trouble eating leftovers. We don't really enjoy them, but I do freeze them. So I'll make um, four portions, we'll eat two, and I'll freeze individual ones, which I can then defrost in two minutes in the microwave. Um, so it's a very, very good way for me to have dinner. So ask yourself that question. Am I into meal prep? Am I into leftovers? And then how many people I'm cooking for? If you're cooking for one or two people and you like leftovers, you're probably going to want at least a six quart. The eight is really quite large. Uh, a six quart will more than suffice to make dinner for two people, plus have uh, enough leftovers and potentially even enough to freeze if you would like. So that would be a good option. If you're not one of those, if you just need to eat and you like to start over fresh, let's say you live in an RV and you can't be carrying food around, etc. In that situation, a mini is really a good option for you. I have uh, a review of a mini uh, on the Two Sleevers blog, so if you want to understand how much fits in it, there's a video that'll show you how much actually fits. Um, if you're cooking for three or four people and you like leftovers, you're probably going to want the eight quart just so that you have enough capacity. Not saying you can't do it in a six, but it'll give you a little bit more breathing room. Um, if you don't like leftovers, etc., probably a six quart is the right answer for you. If you're cooking for four or more, uh, and you like leftovers, you might actually consider adding um, a second one so that you could do, let's say you could do rice, for example, because what some of us might do is we might do pot and pot. So we might make, uh, you know, the butter chicken underneath and pot and pot rice. Well, if you like leftovers and you're cooking for four people already, you might not want to take up the top space with the pot and pot. And so you might consider getting a little side one and that might be helpful. Um, if you don't, don't really like uh, leftovers, the eight quart is fine, okay? Now, let me caveat this by saying, these are all my opinions. Uh, IP hasn't asked me to do this. They're probably cringing at the information that uh, misinformation I might accidentally be giving you. So this is just world according to Urvashi. So take that forward. It's okay. So the first thing I would do, like I said, how many people are you cooking for? Do you like leftovers? And then now let's say that I am cooking for three or four people and I don't like leftovers. So I've chosen an, a six quart. Okay. Now, once I have that decision made, I can go down and say, what functionality? do I need from my Instant Pot? So the first question to ask yourself is, do you plan to make yogurt, fermented batters, sprouting beans, and proofing dough? Because the yogurt button does a lot more than yogurt. Uh, I've sprouted beans in there if you're vegan or if you're um, into whole foods and you like to do that, it's a nice option. It's not idiot proof and foolproof, but it's better than not having one, let me put it that way. And people do proof dough in it. So that's the first question to ask because the main difference in functionality between say a Duo, Lux, Ultra, Ultra has some snazzy features, but the main difference in functionality is yogurt. So ask yourself if you like to do that. I'm gonna start with the no side of the equation here because it's easier. If you say, no, I don't plan to make yogurt, you know, we don't do fermented batters, I'm never gonna proof dough, it's not, it's not a necessity for me, or I have another appliance that does that, just be really, really sure because that's a pretty non-changeable discussion. Once you buy a Lux, for example, you can make yogurt in it, but there's not a yogurt button to make it easy. So if you're not sure, you think you're not gonna do it, but you're not sure, you know, a Duo is probably a good option for you because it's not as expensive uh, and it has that yogurt feature. The Ultra is a little bit more um, top of the line typically, but you know, with sales, you never know how these things work out. If you're absolutely sure, you could go with the Lux and be quite content. It does everything else, um, you know, in, in terms of the everyday cooking that we might do, okay? Okay, let's go to the yes side because of course my heart is on the yes side. 
because I am a geek. So you have to ask yourself some questions. Are you a geek? Do you like to understand how things work? Do you like ultimate control over how things get cooked? Um, or do you want a simple to, to use device? Like, is this a toy for you that you really enjoy kind of, you know, trying different settings on and, uh, you know, uh, writing scripts on, for example, writing your own scripts? Is that something you'd ever want to do? So ask yourself that question. And the main, main question that I would ask at this point is, do you plan to sous vide? So if you're planning to use the machines for sous vide, you need a different machine. Um, the Ultra is probably the one. I think the Smart uh, 2 does it. I'm not entirely sure. I don't have one of those, so I don't really know. So ask yourself, are you a geek? Are you a control freak? Both. I'm both. Um, do you prefer a simple to use device? Do you plan to sous vide? If you say, I am a geek and a control freak, or if you may or may not be a geek, you may not be a control freak, but you intend to sous vide, you really need to go with the Ultra or with the smart Bluetooth because you can customize the Ultra settings down to the temperature you want, the time uh, that you want it for, what you want it to do afterwards. And with the Bluetooth, you can write multiple scripts like that. Um, if you're savvy enough, you'll be able to do that. And it gives you the ultimate control. You know what the temperature is inside the pot, even though the pot is closed, which you know some of us want to know those things. Um, so in that case, you might be better off with this. Are we OK? No questions? If you're saying, look, I deal with complexity my whole day. I just want something simple. I want to be able to push a few buttons. I want it to work. The Duo is a really good option for that. The Ultra does have a small learning curve. Um, you can't go wrong getting the Ultra, don't get me wrong, but if you're looking for the, the least uh, viable model, right? Like um, if, you're, you know, if you're developing software, what's the minimum viable requirement? In that case, if you want a simple thing, um, you know, but you, you, and you, the, 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 sorry, um, uh, unless you're planning to sous vide, um, you, you may not need the Ultra if you're trying to stay within a budget, as an example. So here's, in my mind, the two ways you decide. First, start with the size, figure out what size you need, then go into the functionality. So before I move on to this, I'm going to give you a few minutes to ask questions, because that's really the part about um, the Instant Pot that I was going to cover. And this will, I hope, will help you guys to make up your minds. Um, by the way, I forgot to introduce myself when we started. I'm Urvashi Pitre. My blog is twoslavers.com. My book, which can I brag for half a second, was the best selling cookbook. Not, not like Indian cookbook, the best selling cookbook on Amazon uh, for days on end last week, which was just fabulous. And I hope many of you snagged the very low. Um, Kindle price that they had on it. Um, that book would not have been possible without the IP community, so I, I do want to thank you for that. Um, are there any questions here on this one? No? Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I, I'm going to use the time that I have with you guys. Hey, Michelle, my uh, client slash friend from Singapore just joined. That's kind of cool. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cover some other things. I, uh, while I have you, I want to show you some functionality on two sleevers that you might not be aware of because I get asked these questions all the time. So every time I do a video like this, these slides, which are good charts for you to have, I make them available for free download. So I post them on my site, and you can go to the site, and they're free, and you can download those in a PDF and have them forever. But there are other things on there. So there's videos, there's recipes, of course. It's a, it's a recipe blog. There's vi recipes. There's videos and downloads, and then there's some cookbooks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a functionality that you may or may not know existed on the blog. And I want to do this because I think it's important from a health perspective for many of us. Go to recipe index. OK, this is called hierarchical filtering, for those of you geeks who really want to know. Now, you may or may not be able to see this. I'm going to try to show it in as much detail as I can. But here's my recipe index. You could go in there, and you could say, I want a pressure cooker recipe. I want you to watch how things underneath change, OK? I want a pressure cooker chicken recipe, and it's going to think. I want something that is low carb, and I'm really tired today. It needs to be pour and cook. Oh, there's a lot of suggestions, but really, I'm in the mood today for Mexican food. And when you do that, it shows you the chicken pressure cooker recipes that are low carb, that are pour and cook, um, that are Mexican recipes. So I, didn't, I don't know how many of you guys knew this, but if you're looking for a particular type of diet, um, you can go in and look. I have vegan, vegetarian, keto, low carb, gluten-free, dairy-free, and some other ones as options. And if you see something else, 
that you would like to have considered um, you know, a, as one of these, then, then let me know. Here's another uh, thing. When you're looking for videos for certain things, there's how-to videos. All of these, of course, are free to watch. Um, there's several videos here. What are the six most important buttons on your Instant Pot? How to do pot and pot cooking? How to translate a recipe from, uh, from any recipe down to a pressure cooker recipe? So there's a lot of information about that. And then this, I think, um, is the one that a lot of people value because I get a lot of downloads off of here. Um, I have on here uh, free downloads that are available for you guys. They're truly free. There it's, there's nothing you need to do for it. You just go in here and um, you can see, see this? Getting to know the six IP buttons. How to choose which Instant Pot is right for you? The one I'm doing right now. I put that in there uh, for you guys to be able to download. And then cooking with spices, how to cook rice differently, how to make lots of lovely lentils. And then there are only two books that are you know, nominal price um, on there. So this is kind of the information that I have. And as I do these videos, I load them up here. So I'm going to stop and um, ask for questions. Hey, Faye. Any questions? Because if not, I'm done. I'm just going to skip back to this real quick for those people who are just joining and say that the two things, two ways to make a decision are ask yourself how many people you're feeding and then ask yourself what functionality you need. And that, my friends, is the best way to make a decision rather than listening and to 100 people give you their opinions, at least in my view, because I'm a geek and decision trees are always sexy. Um, so that's what I had. Uh, I'm going to cut this one if we're all done. No questions, Alex? We all good? All right, so I'm Urvashi Patri from twosleevers.com. This is my book. I've already shown you my blog, and I appreciate your spending your time with me this evening. Thank